Well, recently Donald Trump received some good news from Nate Silver. Silver is the renowned statistician whose preferred election forecast shows that Donald Trump is gaining ground on Hillary Clinton. Well, this comes as no surprise to Christopher Parker, University of Washington political science professor. He's also heading up the KCTS9 Crosscut Washington poll. Early on, Christopher, you said that uh, you thought that Trump had a good chance of winning the Republican nomination, and lo and behold, he did. Uh, you were sort of someone that countered a lot of people saying that, uh, you know, no way that he's going to even make it out of the primaries at all. Why, why were you right on this? Uh, well, first of all, thank you for the invitation, Enrique. Um, I was right on this. Uh, just three words can explain this. Scared white people. <laughs> That's it, right? One can never, one can never overestimate, you know, the fear um, and turnout and engagement when it comes to white people being scared. I'm not saying all white people, but enough of them to push Trump over the hump. Okay, explain that more. Scared white people <laughs> in this sense. So. so, so the way that I saw this, um, so my most recent book on the Tea Party, um, kind of started this, you know, investigating. Not necessarily. Clearly, I'm oversimplifying when I say scared white people, but they feel like their country is being stolen from them. Um, and so what happens is when we have uh, a, the first black president in the United States, even though he's governed as a centrist for the most part, right, you still have these people who say he's a communist, he's a socialist, he's not born in the United States. If you just really read between the lines, they're saying that they're scared of this black president, even though he governs as a centrist. I mean, think about the policy with drones. Well, well that's even more right wing. Think about, think about the way in which he, he typically tries to triangulate on things. He's not governed as this liberal that most people thought he would. So, yeah. so where did Trump come in on this? Well, Trump comes in as a course correction. So this is a way that I hypothesize this. So on the one hand, you had Bush and the real conservatives and some of these white folks, they were really upset with Bush. Right? Not because he went to war necessarily, but because he wasn't as conservative as they wanted him to be. Right? So then you have Obama that gets elected, right? So you have this course correction by the progressives, right, who want Obama elected, right? Now the conservatives, or these reactionary conservatives, as I call them, they come in, they say, well, we can't have that. We got to get our country back. The Tea Party was about taking our country back. Trump is making America great again, right? Both of which suggest that there's something woefully wrong with America right now. And I, and I would, and I would like to argue that it's not a coincidence that America is so horrible right now because we have a black president. But beyond that, it's the changing demographics that are also taking place. Uh, and that's a big issue. <laughs> and uh, that's probably why there could be a lot of fear out there. And yeah. Trump then has captured this and taken it and ran. Yes, he's, he's definitely captured and taken it and ran. So look, Trump's not a dumb guy. People want to say he's dumb. He's not dumb. He's very, very clever. Nobody with a degree from Wharton cannot be, can be that stupid, right? He's playing this for effect right now. He's playing on these fears. He knows this fear, is, this fear is out here, and he's playing on it. How else do you explain these mainstream Republican candidates getting knocked out of the primary? I mean, the only way you can explain that is because they're reasonable, they're rational, Trump is not, he's playing on these fears, and it's getting him someplace. You have said that Trump uh, winning the nomination, it, maybe if he wins the presidency, it, it could be a teachable moment. <laughs> Yeah, let me expand on that for a second. So it could be a teachable moment in a sense that for most of our history in the United States, you know, people could always plausibly deny the existence of racism, right? It's not because of racism. It's just that people of color are lazy or just not that smart or unpatriotic. Now with Trump, there's no hiding that fact. There's no way you can say that racism does not definitively exist anymore. Unlike people or Republican candidates in the past where they're using these racial code words, law and order, laziness, once again, Trump is coming right out and calling some Latinos rapists and criminals. He's, he's not sugarcoating anything. And you know what? To 20% to of the electorate, they're saying, man, he's saying what I really want to hear. He's saying what I've been thinking for a long time, what politicians have been afraid to say. He's saying it. That's my guy. I'm going with him. I'm going to ride or die with him. Okay, so you are also saying now that he has a chance to win. 
Yeah, I think he has a chance to win. And the scenario by which that could plausibly occur is that you get a lot of people, a lot of Democrats, or enough of them, really don't like Hillary Clinton. And but beyond that, they don't think Trump is competent and that he's going to win. And so, in other words, it's like, how can she blow this to this guy? And so, not only do they not want to vote for Hillary, they don't think he's going to beat her. So, what do they do? They sit out. They're like, what's the point? I don't want to vote for her in the first place. I don't think he's going to win anyway. So I'm just going to sit out. And in the meantime, he's mobilizing the scared, angry, frustrated white folks. They are going to turn out. They are going to show up, right? Because as social science makes very, very clear in an abundant fashion, negative affect works wonders when it comes to mobilizing people. people. Anxiety, um, anger frustration that will get people to the polls it's always been the case and it's going to continue to be the case and that segment will vote they will definitely vote okay so let's talk about uh, the upcoming uh, presidential debates here now uh, which will be i think very telling uh, it'll be interesting to see how 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 well hillary handles the bluster if he comes <laughs> out with bluster how do you see it oh you know bluster has gotten in this far Right, him being brash has gotten him this far. So I don't think we're going to see any change in his game plan. Um, all he basically has to do is show up and remain upright, you know, because the ceiling is so low for him. People think he's going to fall on his face, which objectively he probably will. But the issue is, is that he's got a really, really, really low bar to clear. Hillary's got a very, very high bar to clear. And so it's basically a no-win situation for her. If she smokes him and crushes him, she's supposed to. If he bests her in some kind of way, then it's really a disaster for her. So how does he come out in this? How do you see him coming out when, and handling the debates? How do I say? I mean, look, the guy is not an ace debater. Let's just, let's just stipulate that. Um, but basically all he's got to do is like he did in the primaries. Well, he's got a stall. He'll throw a few tidbits out there for people to, to nibble on, if you will. He'll say something outrageous, at least one thing outrageous. Um, and then he'll just stall. He'll just say, you know, he doesn't have any concrete policy proposals, right? So he'll just throw the broad outlines of something out there and expect her to counter, right? And then he'll just play off of that. Trump is a counterpuncher. He's not a puncher. He's not going to lead. He's a counterpuncher. And Hillary? Hillary's going to lead, right? I mean, because she has, she's a policy wonk. She knows her stuff. She needs to try to remain on the high road. But by the same token, she can't let him get away with being a bully either because nobody wants a victim for president. So she's got to seem strong. So she's got to figure out a way to be assertive, to, you know, to, uh, to cross all T's and dot all I's when it comes to policy, but she cannot let herself get bullied in public like that because, once again, nobody wants a victim for a leader. Well, I'm anxious to see how this <laughs> plays out. I think a lot of people are to see uh, how well they go at it here. Chris Parker is uh, also going to be, as I mentioned, doing a Washington poll, uh, KCTS 9 and Crosscut, working together with Chris on all of that. That'll be coming out, at least the first poll, uh, I think October 10th. And yeah, right around the middle of October, we'll have yes. another poll right before the election and of course we're going to have more coverage here of uh, vote 2016 here on kcts9.org and also on crosscut.com chris parker thanks a lot we'll see what happens thanks for the invitation Enrique.